Martin here. Uh, thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel. Doing a bit of an experiment today. Um, perhaps you guys can leave me a message in the comments below to let me know what you think about this idea for a video. Um, but I thought I would share with you today a little insight into um, my process for composition. Uh, as, as you probably know, I'm a brass band writer and um, uh, the score we have on the screen at the moment is a piece of music for brass band. So I'm just going to uh, introduce you to the piece and then walk you through uh, a few bars, uh, let you know what I'm thinking and how I would do things and hopefully uh, somebody out there somewhere will find this in some way useful. So the piece is Wake Up the Saint, as uh, most of you uh, or some of you will know, Leanne and myself are off to Starlight Music Camp next week. And the theme for the camp is Wake Up the Saint, and as I'll be looking after the Star Lake band, um, I've been charged with the task of coming up with a piece of brass music for that band along the lines of the theme. So I've been allowed to use the title, uh, permission has been given for that, which is fantastic, so it's called Wake Up the Saint. And the idea of the theme, Wake Up the Saint, goes uh, to the book of Revelation in the New Testament, in the Bible, where there's a prayer, Come Lord Jesus, even so come. Um, and the idea of that verse is, you know, Jesus, we want you to come soon. We're fed up of this world the way it is now. And um, we want things to be better uh, than they are now. And so that's the idea of the prayer. And so the theme for the music camp is, you know, we need to wake up. Jesus is coming back. We need to be ready for when he comes back. Um, so the piece of music needs to fit in with that theme. And to my mind, this piece of music is going to do exactly that. It's going to wake people up. At the beginning, there's a very loud chord, as you'll already see on, on the page in front of you. Um, but it will not just wake people up, you know, physically, but it'll be a call for them to wake up spiritually as well, hopefully too. So the piece uses a couple of contemporary songs. It's going to use um, the song Even So Come. Um, and you can go and find that on YouTube. There's a brilliant setting of it by Tommy Prophet and Brooke Griffith. So if you Google Even So Come by Tommy Prophet, you'll find it there. It's the two of them singing, uh, just with piano accompaniment. A complex song in many ways, um, technically. And so it's going to be a challenge for me to make that work for brass. Um, but there's a second song. And if you just hold on, I'm just going to click a few buttons here and see if I can get to what the other song is because I can't remember what it's called but yeah Lord I Need You by Matt Mayer um, that will be a central song uh, at the moment I have it, the, the melody here on the solo horn in an introduction here brass choir trombones uh, quartets um, you can see I use a little comment sticker here within Sibelius to give me the lyrics uh, as I'm writing I like to just be able to look across um, and see what the words are um, and I've just noticed there's a little comment there at the end of this blue sticker, I need the brackets Alistair Taylor. Now that's a Salvation Army songster song, and I must have thought a few days ago when I was doing this, that would be a good song to reference as well. If, we, if we're referencing this song, um, Lord I Need You, then I need thee, I need thee every hour, um, I think of the words, would be a good song to include too. So it's going to be seven, eight minutes long, the piece when it's done. Uh, it's going to have this big, grand, menacing opening. This is a C minor chord, as many of you can see, from concert pitch. So the B flat instruments are playing in D minor, and the E flat instruments are playing in A minor. And bass trombone, of course, is the only true saint among us, playing in concert pitch. Um, let's talk about the instrumentation and show you what I've done here. We've got um, a big, full organ-like chord in the opening bar percussion joining in bar two where some instruments leave off in bar two you can see the middle band here horns and baritones plus the funny leave off and the reason they leave off is because we need them to be right in on this uh, this moment here after the reverberation of this big chord is finished we need these notes to hang in the distance uh, while that sort of chord hangs there there are some percussion rattles and chimes um, in the distance uh, a bass pedal note that comes in and so my thinking in writing this is this is this big chord is the big wake up okay everybody something serious is happening here um, and as that dies away in a sense and you're left with these chords hanging 
we have uh, these knocking noises, you know, uh, wake up everybody, come on, wake up, that kind of thing. So let me play you the, this opening and, and uh, you can see what you think. It might change size as I press play on the screen, let's just see how it looks. And then what happens is uh, this very sombre feel. Trombones have a ba da da motive, which is going to be developed, I think, as the piece goes on. Ba da 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 da, um, which is a common theme you will have heard before in other pieces, I'm sure, because it's um, on the, based on the pentatonic scale. Ba da 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 da. It's a pentatonic scale. Bum 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 bum. Yeah, that's the pentatonic scale. So uh, that's that little theme there. But what we want to know about is what about this scoring? This is, it's always an interesting talking point how to score a full band chord, isn't it? And I'll just talk you through some of my thinking. Um, let's start at the top of the band. So uh, we make this score a bit bigger so you can see. Call it section. Soprano on the high tonic note at the top, high A. Here's the optional fifth below because um, the chord will work with or without that note there. And that note there is a quite a nice note on a soprano, depending on your tuning, you know, some players use third valve and things like that. Depends how warmed up the player is, I guess, what stage in the concert this is likely to be, as to whether the sop would feel confident to come in there. The very, very, very good players, which I'm sure are at Star Lake Music Camp actually. <laughs> Uh, will come in uh, with that note, no problem at all. Um, but the optional note below, as I say, uh, which if he plays that note, that gives that duplicates this note, and gives extra strength to the top line solo cornet. Now solo cornet's divided into three. That's quite a common thing to do. It's always a bit of a talking point because in Salvation Army brass bands, um, there are usually four solo cornets, five maybe six sometimes, um, and then of course in a lot of bands, one, two or three. But in your average general series uh, band, you would expect there to be four or five players, and of course, whether you've got four or five, three parts doesn't divide very well. Um, I'm, a fav I'm in favour, actually, of the Repiano Cornet part, because it, mathematically, um, from a composer's point of view, it distributes the cornets much more evenly. So on the back row you have six, and on the front row you have four. And then you would divide this into two or four, um, and uh, your rep piano would, of course, be taking this note here, probably. Anyway, so that's the solo corn. It's divided into three. Uh, if we wanted to, if we were really worried about, um, you know, balance, we might remove uh, this D here, and um, uh, you know, just have four players, two and two here. But I'm expecting there to be a few more players at Star Lake on the front row. So we're going to leave them there. And that D there gives a little bit of extra security to the top line first cornet and the flugel. The tonic note, of course, is elsewhere in the chord. Here and here. Second horn, second baritone. Here, second trombone. And then in the bass end of the band, my bass trombone, E flat bass, and B flat bass. There's plenty of tonic in there. So one player on here will be plenty, I'm sure. Now back row, first and second cornets. Um, I like the idea of them uh, being divided. I, I think it's good from a player's point of view if there's more than one player on a part, if the music can be divided, especially in big chords like this. It spreads the load a little bit. Uh, gives the player a feeling that they're contributing something unique, you know, their own note to the chord. Um, and also in terms of distribution of notes, you'll notice that I have on the first cornet the tonic and the and third, and on the second cornet the, the tonic and the fifth. And we could write it in terms of pitch, you might want to write it this way. Bum, 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 bum. Um, but what you end up with, I find, is uh, the stronger players, who are usually a bit stronger than these players, 
playing the two higher notes uh, and the two uh, less strong players playing lower notes sometimes get lost so I like to interlock them in a way just for balance and security. Uh, the tenor horns, or if you're in North America, the alto horns, they're playing one note each on the chord. So we've already mentioned about the tonic. Uh, solo horn is a fifth there, that will be very strong. And the third of the chord is very important. It's very important anyway, you know, in, in tonal music, but here in a big organ like chord, um, Remember, the third of the chord is giving the flavour of the chord. You know, it tells the listener, is it major, is it happy, or is it a minor chord, is it a little bit sombre and menacing? And this is a minor chord, which is sombre and menacing. And so this third of the chord, this uh, C natural and F natural, also on the first trombone here as well, is really important because it gives the flavour of the chord. It's also doubled an octave lower here and on the second euphonium. And at that register, that's as much as you want, otherwise it can just start to sound a bit dirgy at that register. No thirds, of course, in the bass notes, just tonic and fifth. Because there would be a lot of dissonance down there with a third of the chord, so you leave a third out of the chord. And that's about as low as I want to go with a third of the chord there. So, uh, what about this chord? Now, this is an interesting chord. It's, it's an unresolved chord, really. But it's kind of a, a G major with a sixth, um, a ninth, and a fourth. So this is how it sounds. And can you tell that, you know, to the ear, you wouldn't really be able to tell what key we were there. So we have this pretty uh, definite minor chord which leaves off and leaves an unresolved sound hanging in the air and that um, really is the canvas on which these knocking sounds in percussion are painted upon. Okay then guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll play you these bars one more time and if you've learned anything today then fantastic. Uh, if you have any comments or questions you can leave them in the comments section below. Send me a message there. If you want to leave a like on the video that'd be fantastic again or subscribe, even better. Here's the music and I'll catch you another time.